So sometime last year, my Spotify premium ended and I thought I would take it as an opportunity to stop listening to music for a while and see what would happen to me. Because around that time, I was seeing a lot of videos, stumbling across a lot of videos, hearing a lot of experiences from people who were stopping listening to music for a while or forever. And they were reporting many benefits. You know, it was making them enjoy life more, making them focus better, making them more productive, have more motivation. I thought it was bullshit to be honest when I heard it. I was like, nah bro, music is such an important part of life. You know, music is amazing. I love dancing, I love singing. You know, I, I couldn't imagine a life without music. I loved music. You know, I would listen to it every single day. I loved it. So I couldn't imagine a life without it. You know, I was, I didn't do many things that most people do for entertainment, right? Like I didn't watch Netflix. I didn't watch TV shows. I didn't do drugs. I rarely drank alcohol. I didn't smoke. I didn't vape. I didn't play video games or porn or any of that stuff, right? I know I sound lame or whatever, but music was the one thing that I really could not give up because I loved music. I wanted to listen to it. I thought, bro, you know, it's not ruining my life because I multitask, right? I listen to music while I do other things. So I thought, okay, this experiment, I'll do the experiment, I'll see what happens. Um, so I quit and I ended up stopping for I think about three months before I went back onto it. But in this video, I'll report what I learned from those three months because I'm actually surprised with what I found when I stopped listening to music for a while. And I'm gonna talk to you how I think the better approach to listening to music is. Because I don't think we need to stop listening to music, whatever. It is a great part of life. It is important. You know, humans have been listening to music since the beginning of time. You know, cavemen were like, ooga booga, listening to, you know, ooga booga music, playing, playing, you know, buffalo skin drums. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, music has existed for the whole of human history. So I don't think it's something we need to give up. By the way, I'm super excited. I have created a free online community where you can meet like-minded people, exchange value, and it's just a good time overall. First link in the description, join the free online community now. You know, I did, I don't, but I don't listen to music as much as most people did. You know, many, many of my friends, many students especially, probably you bro, if you're watching this video, listen to a ton of music. Bro, if you can't shower without needing to listen to music, then this video is for you. You're probably extremely addicted. People don't realize music is addicting because they think it's harmless. They think it's just something they can multitask with. But students, you know, can't walk in the hallways. They can't wake up. They can't shower, they can't go for a walk, they can't eat a meal without needing music to be playing in their heads. And I think that's a problem. If it gets this extreme, then you probably have a problem, bro. But for me, you know, I would listen to music when I was working out, but I wouldn't listen to music while I was showering or going for a walk or anything. The worst thing was like every now and then, you know, most days, a song would be stuck in my head or something and I would play that song and then I'd probably repeat it like 30 times. I'd play that song and I'd get distracted listening to another song and then another song, another song, and suddenly 30, 30 minutes were gone. So I thought this experiment would be interesting, see what I would find. So the first thing, this is the obvious thing that I discovered from this experiment. You get a lot more free time and a lot more focus. Now it's not exactly what you think. I'm gonna explain, this is a lot more deep than you realize, but you get a ton more free time. So I realized that last year I listened to 1,000 hours of music. Sorry, 2022, I listened to 1,000 hours of music. But here's the thing, first of all, yeah, there's the obvious thing where you waste a lot of time listening to music. You know, if you sit down and you listen to a bunch of songs and dance around while you should be working, while you should be doing stuff, you do waste a lot of time. And also I found it was was a huge way for me to procrastinate. Like instead of starting my task, instead of going to the gym or something, instead of going and doing something, I'd listen to music to try to get motivation, to try to hype me up. It would be like another level of procrastination. So in that sense, you do save a lot more time. You do waste a lot of time listening to music, but there's another way that music wastes a lot of your time. You know, many people think when you're listening to music, you're multitasking. You're showering anyway. You're showering anyway, so you may as well listen to music, right? Or you're studying anyway, so you may as well listen to music, right? But here's the thing. You know the concept of shower thoughts, where you stand in the shower and you get a thought. You know, for example, you're you know you're anxious and stressed all day and you don't know why. But you stand in the shower and then suddenly you realize like, oh. I'm stressed because I haven't done this homework task that I left all week, right? So when you shower, you get these important thoughts that, and ideas that come into your head, very important thoughts and ideas. But if you're listening to music constantly, when you're going for a walk, you're listening to music. When you're showering, you're listening to music. When you're washing your dishes, you're listening to music. Now I'm not saying to never do these tasks without listening to music, but if you don't give your brain a chance to think a chance to come up with an idea, a chance to process what's going on in your life, then these thoughts go on. You never get these thoughts, you never get these ideas. And so if you're constantly stimulated, you don't have time to process these thoughts, these emotions, and it can cause damage to you. So that's the second way it wastes a lot of your time because you're filling every second of your day with stimulation, with music. Bro, if you can't shower 
without needing music, then you're probably more addicted than you realize. You know, the other big thing is not being able to study without needing music. Now I hear this all the time from students. They're like, oh bro, I can't study. I can't focus without music. I get distracted. I get bored. It's painful to study without music. That's something I hear a lot. Here's the thing. They did a study, right? They did a study figuring out the effect of music on focus. So they compared, they took participants and they made them listen to four kinds of music and they saw how well they could focus. So the first kind of music was instrumental music. The second kind of music was lyrical music. The third kind of music was the participants favorite music. And the fourth kind of music was no music at all. And what they found, you might be able to predict, no music was by far the best for focusing. And the worst was listening to your favorite music. Yet that's what most students do. Most students are listening to their favorite music while they study. So you might disagree, but the science says that music is affecting your ability to focus, your ability to be productive. But you might say like, oh bro, but you know, listening to music is so painful. I mean, studying without music is so painful. I can't study without music, it's painful. That's like saying, I can't ride a bike without training wheels because it's painful. How do you learn to ride a bike without training wheels? You take off the training wheels and you practice raw dogging, you practice, you practice riding the bike without training wheels, right? It's exactly the same with studying without music. The reason studying without music is painful is because you're so used to needing music to study. You're layering this dopamine onto you when you study. So of course it's gonna be painful to study without music because you're not used to it. You've made it a habit to need music to study. So the only way to get used to studying without music and to actually enjoy it again is to force yourself to listen to music without studying. It's gonna be painful, but that pain is a sign that you're growing. The same reason why riding a bike without training wheels is going to be painful. It's because you're growing, you're learning the process of riding a bike. When you push your muscles to grow, it's going to be painful. Same thing if you're studying without music, it's going to be painful because your brain is adapting. And trust me, over time, you will get used to it and you will like not even crave music to study at all. But real quick, I'll give you a bonus tip here. If you really do need to listen to something when you study, I'll give you two alternatives. So there's pink and brown noise, and then there's 40 hertz binaural beats. Search these up. These will actually help you get into a focused state much quicker. They will actually aid you in your study session. So if you do need to listen to something, search these two things up. But yeah, on that, this is called dopamine stacking. When you need more stimulation on top of the things you're doing. You know, if you need music to hype yourself up to work out, if you need music to hype yourself up to study and to enjoy studying, this is called dopamine stacking. And you get used to such high levels of dopamine just to do these basic tasks. And it kind of relates with, bro, if you can't go for a walk out in nature, out in the beautiful sunlight, out in the beautiful natural air without needing music, if you can't shower without music, if you can't wake up without music, then quite simply, you are addicted. You are addicted to needing this stimulation on top of you when you're doing a task that for the majority of human history, people did no problem. You know, guys would, you know, before music was so easily accessible, people would walk out in nature not craving music. It's not like guys a hundred years ago were like walking to the shops, bringing like a live band with them or something, right? People weren't listening to music when they were going for a walk, when they were doing stuff. You know, it's not like they showered with a live band with them or something, you know? So for the majority of human history, people could easily walk without needing music. It's just now that we're so addicted to music that we need it when we're going for a walk, when we're showering. So this is the next point I'll bring up. Life becomes so much more enjoyable. You know, I realized, you know, going for a walk should actually be fun. It should be enjoyable because you're out in nature. You're with your own thoughts. It should be pleasurable. It should be fun. But if it's not, it's because you're addicted to something. There's this definition of addiction that I heard from the scientist Andrew Huberman that I really like. Addiction is a gradual narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. So if as time goes on, you less things bring you pleasure. Walking doesn't bring you pleasure anymore. Sitting on your own doesn't bring you pleasure anymore. Showering doesn't bring, bring you pleasure anymore. It's a narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. Then you know you're addicted. Like imagine a, a heroin addict. The only thing in life that brings him pleasure is heroin. You know, social connections don't bring him pleasure. Exercise doesn't bring him pleasure. Nothing brings him pleasure because he's so addicted. Same thing with you. You might not admit that you're addicted, but if you need music to do these basic tasks, then what's bringing you pleasure is narrowing and you are simply addicted. So that's the next point I'll bring up here. Life just becomes much more enjoyable. The, the basic simple things become fun again, more enjoyable. Okay, I'll, I'll bring up a final point here. This is the final thing I'll say. You know, many people say, oh bro, but music is such an important part of life. I can't give it up. I can't stop listening to music. It's so fun. I 100% agree. I think music, I'm not, in this video, I'm not saying to give up music. I don't think we should give up music. Like yesterday I was walking through the city and there was like a bunch of singers singing music on the street and they were singing these Chinese songs. And I really like listening to Chinese music. So I recognized all these songs and it was just like such a good vibe or whatever. I was enjoying it. You know, I think music is an amazing part of life. 
you know, it's an amazing experience and everything. So I'm not saying we should give it up, but like anything else, we need to moderate it. We need to use it in moderation. So it's up to you how you want to approach music, what protocol you want, you know, if you want to quit it completely or you want to do it differently. But I'll give you my protocol, how I approach music and what I would recommend for you as well. So there's three rules that I'll give you when it comes to music listening. The first thing is do not listen to music when you need to be focusing and doing something serious. If you're doing some deep work, an important task that requires all your attention, you know, studying, writing something, hard reading then do not listen to music train your brain to be able to do it without needing music and also when you're resting let's say you're doing a study block then you're taking a 15 minute rest and then you're studying again during that rest also do not listen to music because it's going to distract you it's going to drain your focus when you're doing that second session so that's the first rule of the protocol the second rule is those tasks when you do listen to music for example let's say you listen to music while you shower while you clean while you work out while you walk. You wanna make sure that you're not listening to music every single time. So you know, if you wanna go for a walk listening to music, if you wanna shower listening to music, if you wanna work out listening to music, that's completely fine, do that. But here's what I learned from the scientist, Andrew Huberman. You wanna make sure every now and then you train your brain to be able to do it without music. So how do you practically do this? So maybe every third time you work out or every third time you shower, you wanna do it without music. You wanna train your brain that, okay, sometimes we don't get this music. We don't get this stimulation every single time. And it will help you get over that addiction and it will make sure you don't require music every single time. And the final step of the protocol is treat music like any other entertainment thing. You know, if you don't play video games, if you don't watch Netflix first thing in the morning when you're meant to be studying, then don't do the same, then don't do it with music. Treat music as this entertainment thing. You know, don't do it as soon as you wake up. Don't do it when you're meant to be studying because you're gonna use it as procrastination. You're gonna waste time with it. You know, what I personally do, I don't listen to music for like the first 10 hours of the day because that's the time when I'm meant to be focusing, I'm meant to be studying, I'm meant to be doing some serious work. I'll only listen to music at nighttime or when I'm working out or something. And another bonus thing on that is music becomes so much more enjoyable if you're waiting all day till you listen to it. If you're listening to music all day, it become, becomes boring. It doesn't become as exciting. So those are the three steps of my protocol. You know, take whatever steps you want, change it up a bit. Uh, let me know in the comments what you're gonna do, what your approach is gonna be. See you later.